thank you all for your uh, very, very persuasive uh, and interesting presentations. Before we open it up to Q&A with the audience, I wanted to ask you some questions. Um, and I wanted to begin on a personal note because in a sense, uh, you know, this has been uh, very much part of your lives and starting with Colonel Davis and then, and then Andy and then, and then Tom Wilner. What prompted you, sir, to, you know, you were the chief military prosecutor. Why are you sort of, why have you moved to the position that you now hold having that position in 2007? And Andy, how did you get involved in this issue given the fact that you were a journalist doing many other things before this? And, and similarly, uh, Tom Wilner, you know, you're a managing partner of one of the leading law firms in Washington. This was by no means a popular uh, cause, I guess, with your fellow partners, is, is, that's my intuition. And how did you, why did you get into it? And if you could also give us a sense of the timing. Um, well, so, so. Sure. Yep. My first involvement was back in uh, 2005 when I became the chief prosecutor. And I came into the job that summer uh, believing what I think most of the public did. You know, I was told by my government that these men were the worst of the worst. You know, the kind of people that would chew through the hydraulic lines on the airplane flying to Guantanamo just to kill Americans. Um, and I believed that. And then I got there and I began to look into some of these cases. And, you know, I don't want to make light of it because there really are. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and some of the other people at Guantanamo really are the worst of the worst. But for every one of those, there were some factor uh, of others. I mean, there have been, what, 779 people detained at Guantanamo that we were told were the worst of the worst. Once you get rid of the 80-some that we want to get rid of now, I mean, if you look at the, the ones that the government intends to prosecute, it's about 30 people total out of 779, so it's less than 5% of the people we were told were the worst of the worst that we even feel we can charge with a, with a crime. During my tenure, uh, I felt that the government was really committed to ha trying to have a fair process uh, in the military commissions. It, uh, you know, I think the, the country has this romanticized notion of, of Nuremberg, which I think Nuremberg really was a significant accomplishment in its time, but time has marched on and the law has progressed. And I had hoped that what we did at Guantanamo, the military commissions, that our grandkids would look back on it the way we look back on Nuremberg is having been an achievement and not a detriment. Towards the end of my tenure, there were uh, some new uh, officials uh, placed above me in the chain of command that my policy had been we wouldn't use any evidence obtained by torture or the enhanced interrogation techniques. And suddenly I had people appointed over me that said, hey, look, President Bush said we don't torture. And if the president says we don't torture, who are you to say that we do? So all this evidence you're not using, get it out and take it in there and get these guys convicted and let's get the show on the road. You know, when I joined the military, I mean, I, you know, I believe very strongly in our country and our constitution and our principles and our values. You know, President Obama, when he accepted the Nobel Peace Prize, said, uh, you know, it's doing the right thing, not when it's easy, but when it's hard, that makes us who we claim that we are. And I think for the last 10 or 11 years, you know, we haven't been the land of the free and the home of the brave. We've been the constrained and the cowardly because we've been living in fear and letting the government uh, run roughshod over us. You know, it's been basically take our liberty, just give us some security, and we'll tolerate whatever. And so my commitment when I joined the military was I, mean, I wanted to defend the country and maintain our values and our principles. And I think the state that we've been in for the last you know, post 9-11 era is contrary to what America is all about. I mean, we were built, what made us different was our belief in the law. And we chose Guantanamo because we thought it was outside the law and created these processes in order to avoid the law. So I, the reason I'm, I mean, it's certainly not, you know, I've gotten fired from jobs and ostracized and, you know, it certainly is not a career path I recommend to my <laughs> law students. <laughs> But at the end of the day, you got to believe in something, and you got to be willing to stand up for it. Because you know, uh, the public, I think, is largely tuned out on these issues, and I'm going to try to make it as uncomfortable for them as I can by continuing 
to remind them. So, uh, I mean, I appreciate opportunities like this, and I appreciate people that are interested enough to come out on a kind of a dreary Friday and listen. And I hope you'll go back and talk to your friends and neighbors, and we maybe can reverse course on what we've done the last 11 years.